One of our MPs is warning the downturn could damage our prospects for the London 2012 Games unless the government acts now. Robin Powell reports. For two quite unforgettable weeks in August, they made us proud to be British. Team GB won 47 medals, of which 19 were gold, making it our most successful Olympic Games for 100 years. This week, they were given a hero's reception with a parade that marked the end of the post-Beijing celebrations. Thoughts now turn to the London Games in four years' time. Here at Loughborough University, the closest thing we have in this country to a sporting centre of excellence, preparations for 2012 are well underway. But what concerns Loughborough's head of performance sport is that as things stand, there may not be sufficient funding to enable Team GB to match, let alone improve on, its medal hall in China. You have to look at it in terms of the resource that's going in around the athlete, the coaches, the sports scientists, the medics. You need all of those things to be successful on a world stage, and those things require substantial investment to make it happen. Two years ago, the then-Chancellor Gordon Brown announced an extra £300 million for UK sport to spend on preparing for 2012, in addition to the £50 million a year already agreed. £200 million of the additional funding will come from the Exchequer and about £20 million from the lottery. The government says the remaining £80 million or so will come from the private sector. But in the current economic climate, Loughborough's Labour MP says that's unrealistic. I think the reality is you're talking at less than £10 million in the current climate. The problem for UK sport, you will have to try and find this private sector money, is that they don't actually own many rights to sell to the private sector. Many of the national governing bodies, like uh, Cycling, have done their deal with Sky, and others are going to be doing similar things elsewhere. So there is a real danger that actually uh, the athletes, the up-and-coming athletes, will be those that will miss out. Andy Reid put his concerns to the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport in the Commons. In his reply, the Minister said he was confident the extra money would be found. Now we'll soon announce a new scheme called Medal Hopes, which will provide opportunities for businesses up and down the country to be associated with the world-class performance programme. And I am very confident that we will uh, raise uh, the money needed to make sure we, we get uh, even more success in London 2012. The policy nowadays is to reward Olympic success with greater funding. So swimming, for example, is expected to be one of the winners when UK Sport announces in December which sports will be getting what. But once again, the word is there'll be a generous settlement for athletics, despite the fact that our athletes failed to reach their medal target in Beijing. Pole vaulter Steve Lewis admits he was one of the athletes who disappointed at this year's Olympics. He failed to reach the final. But Steve, who trains full-time at Loughborough, insists the £26.5 million invested in the track and field team in the run-up to Beijing was money well spent. Something what wasn't really in the press that, that much is we had double the amount of finalists this time. So we had 15 finalists. In, in, in Athens, we only had seven finalists. Rooney drives out of the blocks. The guys who could have won medals, it could have been easily seven medals, you know. And to sort of have cutbacks now and not see that development all the way through would be really disappointing for us as a, as a group of athletes. Sprinter Harry Aikin Zariiti is a genuine medal prospect for London. The second year Loughborough undergraduate can assure the taxpayer that he, for one, will make the most of every penny of funding he receives. For me, when I go out there in 2012 and, you know, when I would do with my medal, you know, I'd be making a lot of people happy and I'd be making a lot of people proud and knowing that they didn't waste their money or time. To maximise Harry's chances of success, Andy Reid says UK Sport needs to know now that the extra £80 million will be available. So I'm asking for an underwriting uh, of that amount. It would be great if the private sector then come up with it, but we need to remove that uncertainty pretty quickly. With only a few weeks to go before UK Sport is due to draw up its plans for the next four years, time is running out. Well, Regional Minister Phil Hope and Tory candidate Andrew Bridgen are still here in the studio with me. Phil Hope, do you agree with Andy Reid that the government should guarantee to plug any gap in Olympic funding from the private sector? Well, I had the privilege of meeting two of our Olympic and Paralympic athletes in Loughborough only uh, last week with their, with their medals. Fantastic. And they deserve 
all the support we can give. And I'm pleased that the government, um, Andy Burnham, the Culture and Sports Minister, will be making an announcement next week. What under about plugging that gap, though? Are Metal you behind Hope. him well, on that? Well, let's, uh, let's see what the government minister responsible for this will say next week. But I think it's absolutely right that, that we get behind our athletes. We're putting some £300 million pounds on top of the £4 billion that we've spent right. since 1997 on school sport, community sport and elite sport, which gave us these fantastic results Andrew in Bridgen, China. will you be putting your backing in, into this? You're the former chairman of the Institute of Directors. Will well, you be putting up some of your company money? In business, money? as in government, um, there's actually always the, the right thing to do and the easy thing to do, and they're so seldom the same, unfortunately. The easy thing to do is to say, yes, underwrite the, any shortfall now. But that would be the wrong thing to do at this time for three reasons. Firstly, Camelot have just announced they've actually got more money from the lottery tickets for this fund than they expected. So the maximum shortfall is actually less than £80 million pounds now. That's mm -hmm. official. And also, so and also, the government have actually uh, instituted a, a private sector organisation to raise the funds called Right Track. If you say now you'll underwrite any shortfall, you're taking away any incentive they've got to go out there and raise those funds with four years to go to the Olympics. Uh, four years to go, as you say, and we've got to get behind our athletes, haven't we? That's it, gentlemen. Thank you. Now, some time ago, we revealed how Nottingham campaigner Mark Glover faced charges in Canada after being arrested in a protest against the slaughter of baby seals. Well, this weekend, a Canadian judge found him not guilty of breaching the exclusion zone. I spoke to him a short time ago and asked him if he was surprised he'd been acquitted. Um, we weren't surprised based on the evidence.